Shalom, Yakshimash, the Polish greeting for how are you? My name is Uspek Khan, the host of this podcast, Uspek, here with my two co-hosts, J1 Shim and Matthew Thornberg. Shalom is a Hebrew word for hello and also more importantly, peace. We all want to live in peace, but war is still happening at its most extreme in countries like Ukraine, which seems really devastating. War is a kind of violence, and violence is one of the push factors that cause people to migrate from those dangerous places to another country of their desirable destination where they can re-establish their new living experiences. In this podcast, you will investigate and learn about why and how people immigrate to Poland, and what push and pull factors cause them to stay in or leave their country. You will also hear the challenges immigrants face when they arrive through Poland to find more. Dziękuję. It means thank you in Polish. Anyways, the immigrant groups in particular that we're going to be talking about are the Ukrainians, but also the Middle Easterners in order to make a comparison between those two as the podcast goes on. This can include ethnic Ukrainians as well as its ethnic minorities that make up the population of Ukraine. Let's first dive into a personal story about a Ukrainian immigrant to Germany. Raisa Valyuskevich, a 98-year-old Jewish woman from Ukraine. She was one of the 5,000 Jewish refugees out of all the Ukrainian refugees who has recently escaped Russian bombing of her hometown of Kiev, which is the capital of the Ukraine. As of 2022, she traveled through Poland from the Ukraine, finally reaching her destination of Germany. Her story is important because it highlights her immigration experience that can be learned by the audience. Most people in her position are Ukrainian refugees fleeing from the war or facing the dangers of residing in a new country that they migrated to. They can take away how they can manage to resolve their issue and overcome their fears of these types of dangers. So here's how her story goes. It all started when Ryza fled her homeland in 1941 to avoid the German occupation of the Ukraine. She and her family decided to escape to the region where she eventually ended up in Kazakhstan on foot and by train, just like the Ukraine as part of the Soviet Union. In the three years that they occupied the Ukraine, the Germans rounded up and committed genocide on almost the entire Jewish population. Now, more than 80 years later, history repeats itself in mirror image, and Valyuskevich had to flee from the Russians to Germany because of war declared on Ukraine by Russia. Bombs were dropped and fallen onto the city of her homeland, Kiev, since the beginning of the Russian-Ukraine conflict. Valyuskevich tells Reuters news agency that it feels so crazy to be taken care of by the country that once forced her to flee. And the reason is clear that she has walking difficulties that prevented her from reaching the bunkers in time. So she immediately seeked help from a Jewish American refugee organization and gratefully accepted their offer to help her get away from Ukraine. Via Poland, she eventually ended up in Frankfurt, Germany. Dr. Felix Klein said in a news report that some groups of Jews wanted to come to Germany at the time. East Germany. He is trying to convince the readers of the article that East Germany is not dangerous because although the government is still in place, it was elected complying with the principles of the Democratic to welcome the initiative of Jewish refugees. Happily, the Jews were able to get their citizenship through the offices of the Jewish community and officially become legal naturalized citizens of Germany after the announcement of Germany's refugee intake. Being a Jewish refugee in Germany is a privileged position compared to other asylum seekers because of the painful historic, uh, historic connection. 
But what about the challenges she faced in Poland prior to Wieliszkiewicz's arrival on her journey? In addition, I I would like to I would like to share some st statistics with you guys to support the claim about Poland becoming an anti-refugee and anti-immigrant rhetoric. Insecurity forced over 6.59 million people to leave their home and seek safety in neighboring countries, including Poland, Romania, Moldova, Slovakia, and Hungary. Over 8 million people are estimated to leave Ukraine. The cause for this exodus is the ignition of the conflict in Ukraine, beginning on February 24th, when the Russian military crossed the Ukrainian border in a full-scale invasion, besieging some of Ukraine's largest and most populous cities. Over 3.52 million people crossed into Poland since the 24th of February 2022. As of the 23rd of May, displaced people are sheltering in 28 reception centers and 26 collective sites across Ukraine, rented accommodation or with friends and relatives. Poland is one of the most outspoken anti-immigrant countries in the entire European Union. During the 2015 immigration crisis where the European Union experienced an unprecedented number of people crossing the borders illegally from the Middle East and North Africa, the Polish government at the time decided to let 7,000 refugees to relocate inside their country against the wishes of their people. As a direct result, during Poland's next, very next election, the previous party was voted out of power and was replaced by the Law and Justice Party that openly spoke out against immigration and spoke of a Poland for the Polish people. So the question is, why are so many Ukrainians able to immigrate into Poland? Soon after the Law and Justice Party took power, they and three other countries in the EU, which are Hungary, Slovakia, and Czechia, sent a statement saying that they would not agree to any proposal the EU would make to relocate refugees or asylum seekers into their countries. Last year, during 2021, the Belarusian president decided to cause Poland trouble by flying in refugees from the Middle East into their country and promised that they could enter the EU through their border with Poland. The 7th of July of 2021 marked the beginning of the Polish-Belarusian border crisis, where Poland essentially shut down their border with Belarus, putting up fences and barbed wires, sending in the National Guard, and hosing down three to 4,000 refugees trying to cross the border with water cannons. This was undoubtedly Poland's statement to the world, saying that they will stand firm in order to prevent immigrants and refugees from entering their lands. But surprisingly, the very next year, within a time period of less than five months, Poland has allowed, without any resistance, the entry of more than 3.5 million refugees from the Ukraine fleeing their country due to invasion by Russia during, the, during February of 2022. The difference between the Middle Eastern refugees and the Ukrainian refugees treatments are stark. Poland would allow even would not allow even a few thousand Middle Eastern refugees to enter their country, but would allow millions of Ukrainian refugees to enter their country to the point that their population has increased by more than ten percent. The most likely reason for this stark contrast in treatment of the two groups of refugees is culture. Poland and Ukraine have had very similar cultures and histories. They are both nations founded by around the Slavic identity. They have similar histories of being humiliated and invaded by the Russians, and therefore they both hate the Russians. The president of Poland even went so far to declare that the Ukrainian refugees were not refugees at all, but brothers and sisters facing hard times. This way, they could still stand true to their policy of rejecting immigrants. And one thing that makes the mass entry of Ukrainians into the country acceptable is the public opinion that is in favor and sympathetic towards the Ukrainians, but not the Middle Eastern and North African refugees whose cultures and histories are just too different from Poland's. Today, Poland has accepted so many Ukrainian refugees that their society is starting to feel the strain of the sheer number of people suddenly entering their country. 
the Polish government has found the Polish government has found the need to increase the budget to their public health care system due to them allowing the Ukrainian refugees to use it. Cities along the borders with Ukraine have felt the strain of the massive and sudden increase in population. Yet the general public and government of Poland is in favor of letting them stay. Today, Poland has issued a public statement saying that Ukrainians entering the their country will be able to stay in Poland for at least 18 months while being provided food and shelter, along with access to basic health care. The stark contrast in attitude and treatment between Middle Eastern refugees and Ukrainian ones is one criticized by many countries like the United States and Western Europe. But the simple answer is that Poland's population simply feels more connected to and sympathetic towards the Ukrainian crisis because they are similar countries with similar histories. I would also like to dis discuss an artwork called Tightness of the Heart by Golner Adili, which connects to how the migrants respond to the immigration crisis in Poland also known as del tangi, which is an Iranian expression for longing, literally meaning tightness of the heart. This artwork depicts an image of an artist's bare chest as an examination of her own personal belonging. I chose this work of art because the subject matter of this work of art, which is also car called the heart of your identity, means a lot to me in such a way that when I get to know more about my own identity, I often tend to feel more likely to be included in the group rather than being secluded from the group. Additionally, I react to the image of this piece with a tender feeling that I want to stay connected and share a strong sense of belonging with others regardless of what makes me a really unique individual on the planet. It talks about one challenge the immigrants face when residing in Poland, which is not feeling included in the society of their new home. When people from a different country, like the Middle East, try to live in a new place, they would often feel lonely and they might also face several varieties of prejudice because of their skin color or their place of origin. This can also be explained by the fact that they illegally would have traveled to that country. Poland will most likely keep housing and accepting Ukrainian refugees. I feel like they will continue to do so until the conflict is over, and possibly the public will go against them as more and more of the national budget will be spent as the refugees consume massive numbers of food supplies and medical supplies along with clogging up the healthcare system. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We hope you enjoyed the features in it and actually learned from it what we have mentioned about in our recording.